What's up, YouTube? It's your boy. I'm everyone's boy, the TK Moss. Today, I have on another professional athlete, another professional basketball player, which this guy here plays professional basketball in Australia for the Qua the, the Wayland Panthers. This guy is play back play college basketball in Canada. This guy is big time. Give it up for Kojo Afari. Here you go, hey. man. The king, are you are you there? I'm trying to. Yeah, 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 I'm here. Okay, okay, all right, man. So how's it going today, man? It's going well. It's going well. Um, Saturday over here, uh, in Australia, the time difference is crazy. Um, Saturday morning, so um, I spent the day just running a clinic for a couple of the under ten and under twelve kids of the club. Now just kind of kicking back before uh, my I have a game tomorrow, so I'm just kind of taking it easy for today. Oh yeah, I feel you, man. So like, you play um nighttime over there um tomorrow. Yeah. Oh uh, no, I play oh. Sunday game. So it's in the afternoon. It's about two. It's, it's at two p.m. tomorrow afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, and then you know, like like I said before, you play basketball, um, professional basketball in Australia. So how, like, wh when did you get out to Australia just now? How many months have you been here? Uh so I was in uh, I came here um. January twenty twenty third. So it's about four. About I'm reached, I'm entering the four month mark now. Okay. So how are you, are you liking it better than Canada or what? Yeah. Um. Canada's. I mean, Canada's home. You know what I mean. So yeah, I'm always place in my heart. But um, I really do like Australia. The um, just the vibe here is just super cool. Everyone's super relaxed. You know what I mean. And super friendly. Um. It gets colder than you think. We're in the winter season right now, so it doesn't snow, but it gets pretty chilly. It gets to, like, uh, like single digits, like, five Celsius over here. You, um, I, know, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but it goes Celsius, and the wind chill is pretty bad. But, um, yeah, I like it. Is it colder than Canada? No, definitely not. Okay. <laughs> definitely, not. definitely not, but um, it, it gets it, – it's colder than I thought. Let's put it that way. Okay, okay, but yeah, man, like, because um, before you was at um, what what professional team were you at before this one, or was this is this your first professional team? I was my first overseas uh, professional team, but um, I okay. played professionally in Canada, and um, it was a development league called the Canadian Basketball League, um, and we actually are we actually played five minutes from my house, so it actually worked out quite well. Yeah, and yeah. And did, did you try for the um, Toronto development team? I did. I did for the, the Raptors 905. Yeah. Uh, for the Raptors G, G League team. Yeah, I did. I made the uh, the final the final 10. It was the final like, 10 or 15 or whatever out of like 100, something like that. So um, it was nice to get a call back. But ultimately, they were only bringing four to training camp. And out of those four, they chose one to actually join the roster. Um but it was a good experience because it just kind of helped me gauge where I was at. I've been training a lot, but not doing much playing. Yeah. So kind of where I was. And it was a huge confidence booster for me. And I bet you that was a whole nother experience to, to, to practice and play with some of some upper level guys. So I bet you that was maybe a, a huge, huge bonus to your experience and your growth. Oh, yeah. It, it was definitely big and. Um, kind of intimidating initially just walking in because I actually recognized some of the players from different uh, stuff online and stuff. But um, once you get in, once you get going, it's like it's just basketball. I've been, I've been doing this for a while. So you just you just put it all on the floor and then um, see what happens, you know. Yeah, and, and the crazy part about it, um, you didn't like you didn't pick up a basketball to use, what, 15? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I started that that's my first time ever playing. I was fifteen. I'm I'm twenty four. I'm almost twenty five now. So just Okay. Years. Uh it was when I, I moved to Canada when I was fifteen. Um and that's when I had a massive growth spurt. I went from like five five nine to like six two in just a couple months. Wow. Uh, yeah. Um I was, I've always been pretty long, like had good length and stuff. So the, um my friend was like, Yeah, just try for the basketball team. Had zero skill. I had two left feet, you know what I mean? I could barely catch the ball, but I could jump out of the gym and run fast. So coaches were like, we can use this. And I just fell in love with it ever since. And that's that's kind of the scary part because I, 
I bet you have. I bet you still haven't hit your prime yet. Cause uh, some some people in the NBA they played till they, they started when they was four or five years old. You started when you was fifteen, man. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm really. I've been finding, especially these past two years, um, really discovering myself as a player, and I'm starting to catch on to things. And I used to be intimidated going with against people who have been playing since they were four and stuff. But ultimately, I feel like that works in my favor because I'm, like, growing, like, physically and stuff like that, growing into my body. But, like, the – my learning curve is that of, like, uh, a moldable, like, young 18-year-old, which means that that I'm able to learn a lot quicker and able to absorb a lot more just because I haven't played that long. I don't know if that makes sense. But, but yeah, it, it works in my favor. Yeah, and then I know you, you played because – that you, your first college was at um Salt College, the Salt College Cougars, right? You played there for about uh, about two two to three years. Yeah. So how how was that like? That was, playing on the that collegiate was, level. It, it was an amazing experience because um, graduating from high school, I didn't expect to be able to play college because I, I had no offers, no nothing. So I had come to terms with the fact that I was done with basketball, and then I got a letter from from Sioux College invited me up. Um, and it was a really good experience because I was still really raw. I was just athletic, really raw. and But the coach really took me under his wing and um, started developing me, you know, just with simple ball handling stuff and simple and shooting and everything. And by, like, my second year, I really started coming to my own. It was a really good experience. Yeah, like um, – was it anybody at that college that you kind of like um, studied under, or who who tried who, who or who tried to mold you? Yeah, a good friend of mine actually. His his name is Aaron Brown. He he's actually the head coach right now of that of that college. Yeah, um, <laughs> Crazy. he was we me and him him and I were rookies together. Um, but he was he was the guy. He was the opposite of me in the sense that he didn't quite have the athleticism. But he had an amazing basketball IQ. So it was like, so it was like he, and he saw, again, we, we, we connected right away and he saw the athleticism. He's like, bro, if you could just do this and this and this. So he kind of acted as a buffer between the coach and I, where the coach would say something and then he'd break it down to me and explain, you know, this certain basketball concept or, you know, make it understandable for me. And, um, yeah, he, he, we became good friends. And, yeah, so, yeah, it was, it was really good. And then after that, you was even good enough to get another scholarship to, what was it, Moha- Mohawk College down in Mohawk. Hamilton? Yeah, yeah. So that's my yeah. home, actually. Um, so it was, it was kind of funny because I, even though basketball was going good at Sioux College, but my academics were horrible. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I wasn't <laughs> At all, so I ended yeah, up. I feel you on that, bro. You get basketball, man. You got to, you know. Eh? <laughs> yeah, I got away with it a couple times, but then um, uh, it caught up with me, and so I got. I actually got kicked out of school. Oh, mid season, mid season, I got kicked out of school. Um, and it was pretty rough because it was during a time where we were on the verge of making the playoffs, the first time in school history. And I had to, I had the, the, the privilege of like leading that team to do, to do that. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but then I got kicked out in December, mid semester, mid season. So I came back home and just kind of had to re basically figure my life out again. You know what I mean? So I started um, back up. I went to Mohawk College, which was five minutes from my house. Um, the Mohawk coach and the Sioux coach, they were friends. So I had played against Mohawk before, oh, so and stuff. So the coach is like, "So for this last semester of this year, you can't play obviously because you left, you know, the school. But you can practice with us, and if your grades are on point, then the following season you can play with us." So I buckled down, went to class, did my thing, made the dean's list actually. So I was really proud of myself. That's good. That's what's up, man. And then for the last two seasons, my last two years of eligibility was when I played at Mohawk. 
Yeah, and I bet uh, did, did, and, and and that was good. That's good you, for you to get on that dean list, man, because you know you just gotta you know gotta pass some classes to play. But did did your family um get to see you play down there since you was like five minutes away? They did. They did. My mom actually um that my first year playing at at Mohawk was when we hosted the national championship. So it was like the top eight teams in all of Canada playing a tournament. Mm -hmm. um, so we got to host it. So she got to see me play there, um, which was really cool. And then my second year um, was what was when I was really in my college prime, if you will, as, as my, it was my last year of eligibility. My dad got to see a couple of games. Oh, my dad, wow. it, it was amazing. Cause they, my dad, that was my first, my dad had ever seen me play. What, really? Yeah, my last year. Wow, yeah. that's crazy, man. Yeah, it was a, it was an amazing experience, and I and I played well in front of him too, so it was good. Man, I bet you that's one of the most proudest moments of your of your career so far, man. Yeah, yeah, so I've had I've had a couple career milestones, and that's definitely um, one of the top. And then um, you was good enough. But for after Mark College, you was, you was good enough to get a professional contract in Australia. So I bet you, I bet you, um, they're super proud of you now. But tell us about how that process came to fruition. Okay, okay. So I'll explain. Okay, so I'll explain how I went from college to the Canadian Basketball League to Australia. That's right. Um, okay, so I finished. I finished college, and again, I was in the same situation as I was in high school, where I wasn't getting any pro offers. You know what I mean? Like, so I kind of come came to terms with the fact that um, I was done. I was done basketball. I was like, okay, I played high school, played college. That's that's not bad. You know, a lot of people don't even get to do that. But then I've been talking with a couple people in the basketball world. They're like, listen, you you act. They were telling me that you, you do have the ability to go pro. You you know you can do it. And I was thinking to myself, man, I'm just starting to get good. I don't want to stop now. Um. So, uh, but I knew that I needed, I, I needed a trainer. I needed, you know, you need resources to take your game to the next level. Right. Um, so I, I finished college, got a job, um, a pretty good security job um, where it paid well. So I was able to pay my bills and pay for trainers, pray for, I had, I lived to pay for a skills trainer and a strength and conditioning trainer. So we'd meet four four days a week every other day. So one day skills, one day training, um, while while, uh, while working. Um, so I graduated in um, in April of two thousand and sixteen. Yeah, two thousand sixteen. Trained all the way and all the way trained and worked all the way till um, November. November, the NBL Canada, which is the National Pro League in Canada, was having a, a draft combine. So I submitted my application. I went there, did my thing, left everything out on the floor, but nothing came out of it. But then, um, so a week later, someone contacted me saying, listen, um, there's going to be a professional league in your city, and they're going to be having this, or like a sort of a trial type thing, so you should go to that. Went to that. They were impressed with me. So by December of 2016, I signed the contract to play um, in the Canadian Basketball League. So it was basically eight months after graduating where I got my first pro contract. Um, yeah, it was, it was never gave up. Pardon? Yeah, I, I like, never gave up. Yeah, never gave up. I I knew inside that I'm like, man, I can I can do this. You know, I mean, there's just you know that's that small still voice that tells you to keep going. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I did that, played through, throughout that season. Um, it ended I, – I didn't get much playing time, though, um, but I was just happy just to be a part of the team. I was happy that I, that I got paid to work on my game and get better. So right, versus pretty, other professional players. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so that season ended March 2017. It was a short season. And then uh, I was just working again. Um, just working again, then it got to a point where it seemed that the league wasn't, there was a possibility that the, that the league wouldn't have a second season. Um, it was just rumors at first, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to risk it because I'd given up like so much to pursue basketball. Um, just for like context, I was, I went to school for law enforcement 
and I had all the things lined up to get into into law enforcement, but I decided, you know what, let me pursue basketball all the way. Um, then it got to a point where I'm like, I got to look for, for different options. So in, um, um, oh, and then in the midst of all that, I, I, I got married in September, 2017. So oh, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations, yeah. man. Thank you. Yeah. So it was just a lot going on. Um, so the week before the wedding was when the Raptors, the Raptors tryout was. So I went to that, yeah. um, <laughs> And then uh, come November, I saw a posting online for this massive streetball tournament in Australia, Melbourne, Australia. Um, they were teams from all over the world were going to be there and there were going to be coaches looking to sign players from there. So I'm like, man, I got I to gotta be there. So I saved money out, took a loan, uh, mom helped me out, hey. flew down there, um, connected with the coach over there. Trained with uh, with the team, went to the tournament, didn't do too well in there, but it was still a good experience. Was there for 10 days. That's when I connected with the president from Wallen. He said, we'd love to have you. I came back um, in December of 2017. And then January of 2018 is when I, um, me and my wife flew to uh, to Australia. We've been here for four months. Man. Man, that's incredible, man. Another another story of not giving up because that's a risk on its own. You taking out a loan, asking for money to, to go to Australia, which which wasn't guaranteed, no. and you believed in yourself and it worked out. Yeah. All I all I had going into Australia was um a coach's number and an address to a hostel <laughs> to stay at. <laughs> and then I just went from there, took it from there. And then, like you say, you um, you say you got married. I know, I, I know you have a like a vlog show on YouTube that's called um, Kick, um, it's called um, uh, Kojo and um, Danny, right? And Danae, yeah, yeah. And that's Danae, right, right, right. So, could, could yeah. you tell um the fans about that? What what's that about? Yeah, yeah. So we just so we recently started a vlog, Kojo and Danae. Um, it's honestly we could we realized how crazy of a life change move, getting up and moving to Australia is, uh, you know, so we just, we just, so we just, we just vlog, um, we're just documenting our journey. You know what I mean? Cause, um, and cause we, for side, we want our, our friends or family back home to be able to keep up with, um, our journey and what we're up to over here. We, um, we like to inspire, you know, other young, young couples and just young people in general. We're both real advocates of, um, you know, it sounds so cheesy, but chasing your dreams and um, believing in yourself and believing for the impossible, you know what I mean? And, 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 and betting on yourself. So that's all fused in with just fun jokes and laughter and just, you know, just chill vibes. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, you guys should go check it out. Kojo and Dene. Um, Yeah, that's, that's about it. Yeah, and I saw a couple of videos of it. I mean, you guys seem so passionate about it, and I believe what you're saying about never giving up. You guys, you guys seem genuine about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, just because, like, because even when I look back, um, in uh, from on my high school team, there was some really good players, like really top notch players, and this, I'd say out of fifteen guys, only about six or seven got to play college, and out of those six or seven. I'm the only one out of them that actually ended up playing professionally. And it's not like to my own horn or anything, but it's just, you know, I just knew inside that I was, you know, kind of called for this, you know, destined for this to, right. to play basketball at a higher level, not just for basketball, but to like inspire people and, um, and encourage other young, young people. You know what I mean? So it's, it's really been a life, a life statement uh, of ours. Yeah, and Coach, uh, uh, and before uh, before we um, head out, what is three things that you would tell the people about maybe um, becoming um, a professional or just following following your dreams? What, what would you say? Three things that you would say to the people. Um, well, when it comes to being a professional athlete, for starters, um, you have to. You, if you if you're trying to get into that r world before you're there, you have to live your life as if you're already there. 
You know what I mean? And that's even, that's even just for any, um, uh, unattainable goal or anything that kind of, that seems in the natural, like out of your league, you have to, you have to act as if you're already there before you're there in the sense of if as an athlete, you want to go play at the next level. You have to, um, treat your body as if you're already a professional athlete. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You have to, mm -hmm. um, eliminate people in your life that kind of hold you back in the sense yeah you know what i mean like if someone's into certain things that you're that will affect you getting to that level you may have to make that tough decision and kind of stay and hold back from them a little bit um you have to you have to believe in yourself first you have to believe in yourself even though no one else believes in you um because that's the case people are aware of the one in a million chance to go to that next level but if you if you believe it who cares what anyone else says um and last last thing is just you know just just don't stop like don't let don't let anyone tell you otherwise that's that was that was a big thing for me i've i told people i mean i've been told by people um you know going to law enforcement that's a secure job you know like you know and and it is true but i knew what that I, that where i was supposed to be and that's what kind of fueled my passion and fuel it kept me going even though and you know i wanted to give up um so yeah i'd say those are the three things so i'm kind of rambling uh, no you good you good this is good advice man i hope, I hope people are taking notes and everything that's great advice yeah yeah that's um those are the main things I have right now. If you want more information, you could check out our YouTube channel. <laughs> and it, it, yeah. with that, is it um, anything you want to plug, like your Instagram, uh, maybe Twitter, or, or the, the YouTube channel? Yeah, yeah. So YouTube channel, it's it's Kojo and Dene. That's K O J O and Dene D A N A E. Um, I I don't use Twitter much, but I probably should start. My Twitter is Kojo underscore D J M. And Instagram, that's I'm really on that a lot. So that's Kojo yeah. underscore fourteen, K O J O underscore fourteen. Um, that's where I'm. That's where I'm on the most. So if any anybody has any questions or want to connect further, um, I make myself available. Okay, and uh, and, and then and Kojo, could you could you um stay um stay right there? I want I want to thank you um off the broadcast. Could you just stay there for a second? Yeah, yeah, no worries. And and just thank you for um having me on your show. Um I really I've been watching your videos, really impressed, really I really like what you're doing. Keep right, it up. Appreciate appreciate that, man. And guys, with that, we got another professional athlete. And next time, who knows who I will have, but until then, you guys stay safe. Peace out, y'all.